Welcome to UW 360 from Alaska Airlines Arena and Peck Ed Pavilion, home of UW basketball. Hi everyone, I'm Carolyn Douglas. Thousands of athletes have made their mark in this historic arena and many have gone on to incredible careers both on and off the court. We'll introduce you to one former player who's now using her UW experience to help save lives. We'll also introduce you to the new women's tennis coach, Robin Stevenson. See why she's so excited to now call Seattle home. Plus, did you know that celiac disease, the inability to digest gluten, affects one in every 130 Americans? We'll meet the UW researchers who are working to eradicate this debilitating disease once and for all. And what would it be like to experience an 8.0 earthquake? We sent student reporter Rio Barber inside the Husky Shaker earthquake simulator to find out. But first, Bow Down to Washington, the official fight song of the UW, was written 100 years ago and was first played at Denny Field in 1915. Stacy Sakamoto looks back at the history of this unique song and why it's been so revered by so many for so long. Two, three, four! It's really a very, very unique fight song. I think it's the only one in the country that, that starts in a minor key. One, two, ready, and... You're getting ready to play and now you hear your fight song. Us against you. You're ready to go. It kind of arms you for battle, so to speak. It's, it's the true meaning of being a Husky is playing this song as we like barrel down the field. Yeah! University of Washington alumnus Lester Wilson wrote Bow Down to Washington in 1915 when the school newspaper held a contest for a new song. The sole purpose? To rally the team against the California Golden Bears. It was obviously a, a really nasty rivalry. <laughs> Husky band director Brad McDavid says Wilson was awarded the $25 prize and Bow Down eventually became the fight song. It's revered by generations of students, including 98-year-old Burt Pound, who played it in the Husky Band in the 1930s. Like the National Anthem. <laughs> and Richard Perry, class of 67. I think of a lot of my friends who are Cougar fans, and uh, I think bow down to Washington really is a, a good symbol to me that they have to uh, bow down to the Washington fans. So. A century after it was written, the song is a staple here in Husky Stadium on the lips of fans and on t-shirts everywhere. McDavid calls for the song about a dozen times every home game. Sometimes the full minute long version, sometimes the shorter fanfare, affectionately dubbed Bow Little. If there's only 10 seconds in between plays, hey, I can still get it in there and the crowd can still feed off of it. McDavid says the song isn't easy to sing, but that hasn't stopped students and alumni from taking a shot. For Husky athletes like Megan Kufeld, goalie for the women's soccer team, Bow Down is a reminder that she's part of something bigger. I think personally and for my team also, it's a lot of school's pride and school spirit um, that we get to represent UW every day we compete, every practice. It's more nostalgic for former athletes like basketball coach Lorenzo Romar. He first heard Bow Down when he was a Husky star in the 1970s, but he says it means even more to him now. 
you start to remember all those that were before you, that went to battle, all those before you that wore the jersey, that put on the football pads, that, all of that. And this is representing all of us. This is a culmination of Husky Athletics. Bow Down will likely continue to inspire Husky fans for generations to come. You can find the lyrics on our website at uwtv.org slash uw360. Up next, meet the UW women's tennis coach, Robin Stevenson, as UW360 continues. Welcome back to UW360 from HECED Pavilion. Recently, Athletic Director Scott Woodward hired 31-year-old Robin Stevenson to take over the women's tennis program. Robin grew up in eastern Canada and started at the University of Alabama before turning pro and becoming a coach. So while she might not be a household name among players here in the Northwest, that may be about to change. Guard Swanson introduces us to a true players coach. One year ago, Robin Stevenson was given her first head coaching opportunity, and she led Georgia State to its most successful campaign in school history. That led to a new opportunity here on Montlake. I am uh, really excited about this job and, and just have a passion for tennis and for people and, uh, you know, excited to be here at the University of Washington and, and um, you know, work with this talented team that we have. But the path wasn't always certain for the winningest female tennis player in University of Alabama history. She had a promising professional career ahead of herself less than a decade ago. There was a couple years in there where I was trying to decide if I was going to continue playing or get into coaching full time and I always knew that college coaching was my passion and what I was going to do. Um, but I felt like I had to close the door on the professional tennis before I made that commitment. And now it seems professional tennis's loss has become the Husky women's tennis program's gain. Along with that, I feel like I can still relate to them. I don't feel like I'm too far off of playing and competing myself. It's easy for me to kind of relate to them, and, and yeah, there's not a huge age difference, so it's not just on the court, but off the court too. I feel like I, I can get to know them pretty well, and it's important for me to, to build those relationships. But at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm their coach, and, and uh, there's you know, obviously structure and stuff involved with everything. But yeah, I would definitely consider myself a player's coach. I think Coach uh, Stevenson is bringing a new energy, uh, maybe a bit younger energy. Uh, the fact that she can play with us, that's really fun for us, for the players, because there's just a, a different kind of environment that she brings. So we're really excited. We usually kind of lose, actually. She's, a, she's an amazing player. And uh, yeah, that kind of makes me mad sometimes. First, I thought she would be like a lot more serious person. But as I've gotten to know her, uh, she's actually really funny. And uh, I love joking around with her. And I love being able to do that. So I'd say that, you know, she's very motivated. But also, at the same time, she's very fun. You know, I think the thing that stands out to me the most is just what a, what a tight-knit group they are. And it's a really special group. They work really hard. Um, they're very motivated to to achieve the goals that they've set this year. Since you see her every day, she's like your mom. So, <laughs> you know, you want someone that you can relate to, and uh, she's already done that in the very short time she's been here. Clearly, it's a family affair, and everyone's excited about what the future may hold. But what has struck Coach Stevenson about her new changes? The last few years, the team's been right on the bubble of making postseason play and haven't quite quite got there. And so this year, that's definitely the goal, and I feel like, um, you know, it's definitely attainable to, to make that and beyond. Um, it's definitely a goal to, to have some individuals in the NCAA tournament as well and just have a stronger showing in the Pac-12 in our conference and uh, you know, beating some of the teams that we've lost to in the past couple of years in close matches and, and just kind of turning the page on some of those things. We turn now from tennis to a debilitating disease that affects millions of people. Celiac disease is a genetic condition that forces people to steer clear of gluten or risk serious intestinal damage. But thanks to the UW, a new treatment may be near. Austin Seedentoff explains. Here at the Hub Dining Hall, students and employees can eat food from any of the eight available eateries. Pizza, soup, salad, Indian food, you name it, they have it. But for people suffering from celiac disease or gluten sensitivity, 
even a decision as simple as what to eat for lunch can have dire consequences. What's going through your mind if you're choosing to eat in a place like this? There's definitely a lot going through my mind right now, for sure. The human digestive tract normally cannot break down gluten, which is a protein found in wheat, rye, and barley. This isn't a problem for most people, but for Sarah Lorimore, who has been clinically diagnosed with celiac disease, gluten creates an autoimmune response in her lower intestine. I actually got just really sick, really tired, and it was a prolonged period of time, and eventually got to the point where I couldn't feel my feet, I couldn't feel my toes. So I was actually admitted to the ICU, and they did a full body MRI, CAT scans, um, all these different tests on my nervous system, and everything came back negative. As a last effort, Sarah decided to try a new diet called paleo that eliminated processed foods, dairy, and grain. It wasn't mainstream. I didn't know anybody doing it. And really, within a month, I was fine. I was basically totally fine again. Fortunately, a treatment for celiac disease is in the works at the University of Washington Institute for Protein Design. An idea came from a group of undergraduates competing in the 2011 Internationally Genetically Engineered Machine, or iGEM, competition. Dr. Ingrid Poltz advised the students as they worked to design an enzyme that could be swallowed as a pill survive in the stomach and to break down gluten before it reaches the intestines and provokes an immune response. That's the gluten. Mm -hmm. It would break down gluten, uh, which is difficult, and it would work very well in the human stomach, which is also difficult. So in this model... It... Dr. Poltz and her team of undergraduates took an existing enzyme that could already survive in the stomach and used a program called the Rosetta Molecular Modeling Suite, developed by UW's Baker Lab, to build and test a new enzyme that can break down gluten. The team of students would go on to win the iGEM competition with a prototype of the enzyme, but some felt that their research needed to be taken further. And we decided that uh, we can't just let this technology sit on the shelf, as is what happens with a lot of these undergraduate student projects. Poltz started to work with the UW Protein Design Lab to perfect the design her team of students had started and one day take the enzyme to market. Our plan is to spin out a company uh, in late 2015. And to be able to have that reassurance to take a pill and then know even if I choose the gluten-free option on the menu, if there's cross-contamination in the kitchen, that I have that extra protection, it's, it's just huge to have that. What started as a student project has been carried forward by the UW's Institute for Protein Design and may very well be a great relief for those around the world affected by celiac disease and gluten intolerance. I'm Austin Seedentoff, and I'll see you next time. The enzyme treatment will hopefully move to human trials soon. We'll be right back. Welcome back to UW360. We've all been warned about the big one hitting the Northwest. A hundred miles off the coast of Washington, the Cascadia Fault has lain dormant for 300 years. And when that hot spot erupts, experts say it could produce a 9.0 megaquake. It's hard to imagine what that might be like. So we sent student reporter Rio Barber inside an earthquake simulator at UW to find out. One of the wonderful things about the university... Whoa! <laughs> okay, full disclosure. We're not actually inside a house right now. We're on the UW's hub lawn inside the world's largest earthquake simulator, the Big Shaker. This machine can simulate up to 8.0 on the Richter scale. <laughs> Hit it! The Big Shaker was brought to campus to show people just how powerful an earthquake can be. And to serve as a reminder that Seattle lies on a hazardous fault line, a zone of east-west thrust faults which could one day generate a 9.0 on the Richter scale. It felt a little bit like a ride, but afterwards, just feeling how um, I felt really shaky afterwards, and I think that was probably very realistic <laughs> as to what would normally happen. Uh, many people don't realize that the mountains we have are gorgeous, you know, the uh, volcanoes, uh, Mount Rainier is an active volcano, all of it's because we sit on the Pacific Ring of Fire, and we are in one of the most earthquake active areas in the entire country. An earthquake of significant size could have catastrophic effects on the university campus. Luckily, UW Emergency Management exists to help lessen the damage as much as possible. Welcome to the basement of the W Tower at UW Emergency Management's EOC, or Emergency Operations Center. 
and may seem a little empty now. And I guess we should be thankful for that, because once disaster strikes, this place comes to life as a center for coordinating relief. To very quickly assess what the situation is, and then determine what the best course of action to quickly recover and bring this university back to its normal operating state. UW Emergency Management consists of the police, health and safety, the medical centers, student life facility services, and the IT department, all coming together to create the 82-person task force. It's the really bad day at the university, so when we activate here, we coordinate all the moving parts of the university to try to get this place up and running as quickly as possible. It's always in our backyard, and it's, it may not be glamorous or something people like to think about, but when we bring events like this right to the people's forefront, is not just a brochure on the table, but actually has them feel and experience something, and hopefully they'll do that next step, is take an action to actually prepare themselves or their family. I can think of several bookcases at home that I may need to attach to walls as a result, so. <laughs> Emergency management brought the Big Shaker to campus to remind us that disasters, while not frequent, can be catastrophic, and we need to prepare for them. So the next time the ground starts shaking, know that UW Emergency Management has got it covered. I'm Rio Barber, and I'll see you next time. For earthquake preparedness tips, you can visit our website at uwtv.org backslash uw360. When we come back, we'll introduce you to a former UW women's basketball player who continues to inspire us off the court as UW 360 continues from Heck Ed Pavilion inside Alaska Airlines Arena. Welcome back to UW 360 from Alaska Airlines Arena and Heck Ed Pavilion, home of Husky basketball. Thousands of UW athletes have gone on to incredible careers, both on and off the court. And one of those athletes has really made her mark in this community. Erin Mayofsky shows us how she's gone from inspiring fans here in the bleachers to saving lives in Seattle. Now, though, the city is so is different that you can work anywhere. So this is Michelle Perkins' home court a team player inside the Seattle Fire Department. Ooh, you don't, look, at he's starting to sweat, you know. <laughs> a firefighter paramedic. Back in the 90s, the Huskies' power forward was lighting it up on the floor, leading the dogs. Not even two severe knee injuries would keep her down, especially now. I think I have a unique job. I think that I've had the privilege of serving people in a way, I mean, I've had people cheer for me for years. And so I've had now the opportunity to kind of give back into the same community that cheered for me. Perkins says the University of Washington helped shape her life. A rigorous basketball schedule, coupled with being a student athlete, made her who she is today. Once a Husky, always a Husky. Like, I will go on a run and, I, and they remind me that like, hey, didn't I watch you play? And it makes me like, like what? I'm focused on the patient. And, and when there's a moment, oftentimes people, I, I'm always a Husky. Even though I'm here and in a different uniform, people remember that. And I think that it's really great. But now Perkins is recognized for more important things like saving lives. The University of Washington School of Medicine has a terrific partnership with the Seattle Fire Department. And Perkins is center court, knowing firsthand why teamwork is crucial to saving someone's life. It is the ultimate assist. We receive some of the best training in the world. We have amazing doctors. We get great uh, uh, clinic and rotation opportunities. And they really let us get hands on because they know that we're going to be working with them in the future, that we are starting the pre-hospital care that's bringing these patients to them. What happened? The idea that sh her life experience includes the, the high level team sports, it just communicates to me right off the bat that she knows how to train, she knows how to perform, and she knows how to receive the feedback. And, and that's one of the great things about Michelle is that she's always trying to improve her, her performance. And in this case, it's the paramedicine, but you know, University of Washington, it was the basketball. Michelle Perkins has been with the Seattle Fire Department for 16 years. She's handled hundreds of situations, but there was one that happened when she was first on the job. Perkins was called to a home where a woman was in cardiac arrest and little did she know that that emergency would really hit home. It was her rookie year, 
2002 with the department when she received her first Medic 7 call. Cardiac arrest for UW athlete Kayla Burt, who was unconscious, dying. On New Year's Eve, we get a run, and I see a girl literally in the same issued gear that we used to wear, right? Like, you know, the UW, and I'm like, oh my goodness. And, and then I called after we, res you know, re we resuscitated her and we got a pulse back. The girls, the teammates were like, the coach is on the phone, she wants to talk to you. And sure enough, it was the assistant coach, the same assistant coach I had. Not only does Michelle save lives, she builds lives. You've seen that she is guarding you. You need to be like her. When she's not with her fire department team, she's following her roots back to her early playing days at Lakeside High School, always giving back. She's really inspirational. One of the best high school basketball players to ever come to Lakeside. She's very dedicated to teaching us what she was good at in high school, and it's always a fun experience to learn what works for someone else. And she was an amazing player, and we all love working with her because she's so passionate about it. You always ask for the love. You're asking the guards for a tough pass. Michelle Perkins, inspiring, incredible, instrumental with everyone this former Husky touches. I have two daughters. They're, they're both uh, athletes. I would be proud if they would grow up to be like uh, Michelle. I've lived a fantastic life and I think I've uh, served others in a wonderful way and uh, I would just tell people to continue to dream and not to set limits and don't allow other people to set limits because a lot of people didn't think this is the place that I could be. Michelle says when she's not helping save lives with the Seattle Fire Department, she's spending as much time as possible with her family. And every once in a while, you might catch her right here at HECAD watching the Huskies. And that does it for this edition of UW 360. If you'd like more information on any of the stories you saw today, just head to our website at uwtv.org slash uw360. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Carolyn Douglas. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time with all new stories from the University of Washington.